וזאת התורה אשר שמה הושע, לבני בני ישראל, על פי אדוני ביד משה. Please be seated as the vacuum cleaners clean the sanctuary. All of you can be seated. And our bat mitzvah will continue with her haftarah, her right of oh, cool. okay. uh, <laughs> On top of that, I think you probably had enough, but... <laughs> Last desperate attempt, okay. I promise it, no, leave it, honey, it'll be there. No one's touching your candy. That is your section. There we go. At the end of the service, you can come back for the rest with great joy. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bahar Bin Vim Tovim Barza Vediv Rehem Hanemarim Bemet Baruch Atah Adonai Aboher Batara Umashe Abdo Umvim Vie Hamet Bat Sedek Behol benai limude Adonai Berav shalom banai Bitzdekati konani Rehakimi ose kilo tirai Umim hita kilo tikrav alai Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Sur kol haolamim Zdik behol haderod Ha'el haneman Ha'omer v'oseh from Devir Mekayim, Shekol Devarav, Amet Vatzedek, Al HaTorah, Ve'al HaVodah, Ve'al HaNavim, Ve'al Mhum Shabbat HaZeh, Shinatata Lanu, Adonai Eloheinu, Likdashav Limnua, Lahavod Ultifare, Al HaKol, Adonai Eloheinu, Anatnu Mojim La, Umvarhim Ota, Yitbarashim HaBafikol Haita, Mid Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai, Amen. Beautiful. Mazel tov. So, <sighs> having fulfilled the mitzvah of chanting from the Torah and sharing the Haftorah with us, we now have an opportunity to listen as our fabulous bat mitzvah, Remy, is going to share slowly some of her <laughs> thoughts with us about the significance of this day and the meaning of her Torah portion and how special it is to her that all of you are here to share this special day with her, slowly, into the microphone. Go ahead. Well, I'm not going to go away from the microphone. When I was a little kid, I had a favorite tree in Barrington Park. Every day, I would go there with my parents and my dog, Daisy. Daisy was a fierce protector, and I rarely got to play with other kids. But she would always follow me to my favorite tree and stand on guard as I scaled the withered limbs. In order to reach the high branches, my parents would have to lift me up or let me stand on Daisy's back, which she didn't take very well. And every day I would tell my mom, Mommy, one day I'm going to climb up to those high branches all by myself, and then I'll be able to see the whole world. A few weeks ago, I went back to the dog park to climb my favorite tree. Although it was without Daisy, she was there in spirit. I grabbed hold of those branches and climbed all the way to the top. I looked around me, and even though the view is the same as when mom and dad hoisted me up, it felt so much different just because I had done it on my own. Today, I climbed the Judaic tree all by myself with no one's back to stand on. By becoming a bat mitzvah, I reached the top of this tree, and from this vantage point, I can see the Jewish community that will always surround me and pick me up when I fall. I am grateful for being given a chance to climb this ancient tree, to grab hold of the same limbs my ancestors have held onto for thousands of years. In climbing this tree of knowledge, I am touching and experiencing history. In my Torah portion, Parshat Re'eh, it talks of blessings and curses, how one can be disguised as the other, and how both bring good and bad into this world. Historically, being Jewish is both a blessing and a curse. Despite our steadfast beliefs and strong community, we are set apart by our religion and therefore often persecuted for it, as in the case of the Holocaust. Every Friday night Shabbat, I stare at the golden candlesticks brought by my great-grandmother from Poland in 1930. Although it is undoubtedly a blessing to have such a substantial piece of history sitting on my dining room table, 
You cannot simply look at those candles and not think about the hardships that brought them here to my family's table. At the time, what became my blessing would have been a curse, smuggling them in the keen eyes of anti-Semitic Poles in a country that would, in just a few short years, be taken over by the Nazis. But now I understand that even within that curse was a blessing. It gave my great-grandmother something to believe in, being able to hold those candles, knowing they would someday be safe, and it is a blessing now, knowing that I can pass on these candles to future generations and tell them the story of their brave ancestors. My Torah portion relates to me in other more obvious ways. Out of the entire Torah, thousands of pages worth of stories and lessons, I got the portion that talks about keeping kosher and not eating meat. Clearly, someone is sending me a message. Just knowing this gives me an inexplicable connection to God, a feeling of being born with certain qualities and morals that no one can ever take from me, an extremely important part of Judaism. Why does the Torah put such severe restrictions on how and when we eat meat? I highly doubt they knew about mad cow disease, and even if they did, there'd be no McDonald's around to cause it. And why are we only allowed to eat certain kinds of meat, and then only under certain circumstances? Part of it is because, at least according to Rabbi Joseph Telushkin, being vegetarian is the ultimate observance of Jewish dietary laws. But I also believe it is because the Torah wanted Jews to be separate, in some ways. If you isolate what foods a person eats, then they become distanced from their peers. In this way, the Israelites could be a part of the community, but retain their separate identity. These laws given to us by the Torah make everyone unique but still united, creating the strongest bonds possible. Throughout my journey to becoming a bat mitzvah, I have learned all the lessons preached in my portion, parshat re'eh, ten times over. For example, not practicing your Hebrew may seem like a blessing at that moment, but later in the day it becomes a curse when your mom starts yelling at you. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> I've learned the importance of being unique because those qualities that make you special are what other people value the most in you. I've learned to always believe in your family and friends and that any challenge worth doing is worth doing your very best. This day would not have been possible without both my parents. Mom, you are the shining bulb of knowledge in our family. <laughs> You're the one that always tells me to knock in cars with strange people I don't know. Probably wouldn't happen, but it's good motherly advice or to change my outfit because it's completely not weather appropriate. This is likely to happen twice, maybe three times a day. You've taught me how to succeed in life and that if you do what you love and love what you do, no matter how much money you make, you're the richest person in the world in the ways that count. Even though I didn't inherit any of your looks or your personality traits or your fear of the water, <laughs> I did get the knowledge genes and I think those are the ones that count. You make every experience a memory and a lesson and I love you. Dad, you have to be the funniest, most personal guy I know. When I'm crying my eyes out because I got a B plus on a test, you can make me laugh, even if the jokes you're telling me aren't very funny and they're all about Polish grandmothers. <laughs> I think it's in the delivery, as you say. <laughs> You've taught me to not afraid to be yourself in front of other people because your personality is the most impressive thing you can show off. I've learned from you to stand up in front of an entire auditorium of people and give a graduation speech and to stare down the other debate team and dare them to give you a POI when you make a good point. You've taught me to be strong even when you lose someone you love and to never give up even when the odds are against you. I love you, Daddy. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today as I become an adult. Not in the sense that I get a car or my own apartment. I wish. <laughs> <clears throat> but in the way that I am willingly taking on the responsibility of being Jewish and all that comes with it. Even if all your material possessions are gone, you will always have your beliefs. And today, I'm being officially accepted into this community of beliefs and values. I'm growing up. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Beautiful. Nice job. Thanks. And I slowed down. You did. Beautifully. So, um, having slowed down and read so beautifully your speech, it's now my privilege to invite your parents to come up and... No, you're supposed to okay, stand cool. right here. You never get to sit down again. Um, <clears throat> your parents to come and uh, share some of their thoughts with you. supermarket day. A frantic mother wheels a grocery cart with a broken wheel through the produce section. In the cart sits a very large, very loud two-year-old. The frantic mother sees a sandwich